Let's go to question number two, which comes from Cindy. And what Cindy asks is, I have been working on trying to be more active with breath work and HRV training. I think Hanu will be a huge source of encouragement and accountability for me. It's a great part of that question. Love that. Where is a good place to start in this part of my journey? I like this question because the first thing I thought of when I read this question, the reason why I included it in, in this podcast was because we're talking about where do we start in creating habits? There's a great book by James Clear. Uh, it's, and most people have heard of this book by now. Great podcast that he did with Peter Atia as well. I think he's James Clear might have been on Rogan, if I remember correctly as well, which I'm sure was a great podcast. But James Clear's book is referred to, it's called Atomic Habits. And it's uh, Atomic Habits is referring to how can we make these really small atomic, you know, size of an atom, small, small changes in our habits that can make that can reap tremendous results. And one of the key concepts that he talks about within Atomic Habits is this idea of acting like who you want to become, taking on that part of you as your identity of who you want to become. So people who are, and it's, it could be just as much as language being changed initially that can make a huge impact. So people who say, I want to be a meditator could say that I'm trying to be a meditator as opposed to I am a meditator. Um, I'm actively working as a meditator. Uh, it's these types of small atomic uh, changes in identity that can be extremely helpful in habit formation. One of the other things is, is that when people start engaging in a behavior, a lot of times there are certain personality sets, I should say, I'm one of them who like to take a deep head first dive into things. They say like, I'm kind of all or nothing. I'm in it or I'm not in it. And they may say like, I'm going to be a meditator, which means that I'm going to meditate every single day without you know fail for 30 minutes. I'm going to meditate for a solid 30 minutes. Now, what's the churn rate on that? So basically it's like, what's the level of attrition? How many people start that and then epically fail because they can't sustain that? And the answer is many, if not most, if not almost all. It's not a lot of people who can do that. The same goes in breathwork and HRV biofeedback, right? I know that the research is very clear that if you want to get the most ample benefit of HRV biofeedback, it's practicing twice a day for 25 minutes. So we're talking about 50 minutes of breathing and HRV biofeedback practice. Now, what percentage of 100 people that start that or try that are going to actually engage in 50 minutes a day? And especially if you split it up into two 25-minute sessions, the answer is not a lot. Um, I would say that greater than 95% of people are going to fall off that bandwagon pretty, pretty soon. So then what is a good way to start? Well, it's to make our habit small first. If we want to engage in something that is becomes habitual, a part of our routine, we bring it as a part of our, our identity where I'm somebody who works on my stress resiliency. I'm, I am a breath work practitioner. I am an HRV biofeedback practitioner. That's a good put, way to frame our identity. But then the other component that I really like here is starting small. It doesn't have to be 30 minutes a day, 50 minutes a day. It doesn't have to be 15 minutes a day. It doesn't have to be five minutes a day. It could just be that each day I'm starting with 30 seconds. Or I'm starting with a minute. I love, I mean, a lot of people who've listened to me have heard me talk about Dan Harris's uh, notion of meditating for one second. And if you meditate for one second and you feel like you want more, go for it. If you meditate for one second, you feel like, ah, oh, today's just not the day. Then maybe take a break and come back to it later. I love this notion for HRV biofeedback with Hanu. And I love this notion of, uh, of, uh, of, of it working within the context of breathwork as well. So that's actually what I want you to do if you buy our device in Hanu. It's not to say, oh, well, now I'm dedicated to 25 minutes twice a day of practice. Like, I, I don't really want you to do that. What I actually want you to do is dedicate 30 seconds, maybe just checking in one time a day on this. Uh, I think you're going to find a lot of utility in utilizing it and practicing with it all throughout the day. 
but I don't need you to do it initially. So for Cindy, if you want to become more active in breathwork and HRV biofeedback training, set the bar pretty low for you. Set the bar at, I'm just going to do it for one minute each day. Maybe it's at the start of my day. Maybe it's at the end of my day. It's during my lunch break. Just start there. I do agree. I think honey will be a huge source of accountability and encouragement. I mean, we're going to alert you when we see some signs of things being a little bit off in your nervous system. Um, but a good place to start, especially if you're looking to actively engage in practice, is just to set aside 30 seconds to a minute initially and just practice it. And then when you feel like you're really strengthening that breath work or that HRV biofeedback muscle, then extend the time. Maybe it becomes two minutes. Maybe it comes three. Maybe you get up to five minutes in a session. But there's no need for you to try to say, I'm going to establish this pattern of behavior that is 30 minutes. There are some people who can do that. And I'm not knocking it if you if you can do that. And that's a part of like your personality and your ability and your, your skill set. That, that's great. Like good on you. Um, I want people to do like the best training is the one that you do. Right. And that's a, a, a term that's used a lot, but I don't think it's overused because I think it's true. And so Patrick and I talk about this all the time. So Cindy, I would strongly just encourage you. Yes. Use Hanu. Like it's great. But also too, like for me, like it's just a matter of saying, I'm going to set aside 30 seconds. Here's one thing that I do every single day. And this is just a personal anecdote. I love doing this. In my car, I have my Hanu on and I, I will put my phone. So I've got my phone right here. I'll put my phone like up on the, the dash on the little phone holder up there. More like when I have GPS up and I'll put the Hanu app up there. Uh, be careful, kids. And I'll keep it on to where it, like it doesn't turn off. And, you know, it's tracking HRV while I'm driving. It's tracking my heart rate. I'm looking at my stress resiliency score change. And uh, I won't start necessarily a, a guided practice. You could do that. But what I'll do is I'll actually use a relaxator. I'll put the relaxator as uh, made by um, Anders Olsen. I put it in my mouth. I turn my resistance. I normally do about four and a half or so. And I will breathe um, with that thing on for the entire duration of my commute. The reason that I do that is because sometimes pacing breathing while driving is a little bit distracting because I'm trying to follow a pacer. Whereas this kind of, this device kind of just paces it for you. I'm not a huge, like, advocate of exhaling out of the mouth. It's okay. It's fine. I like the nose. It's just more comfortable for me. I like the resistance that it creates. It just uh, feels better subjectively. Uh, I'll put that in my mouth <clears throat> and I'll drive the entire commute. I live about 25 minutes away from here, my office in our studio. And I will just breathe the entire time. HRV always goes up significantly. It's a great way to you know, reduce the stress throughout my drive. But that's a habit that I've formed. And even if I don't have any other dedicated breathwork practice, I always have something that I'm doing when I'm in the car alone. Like if I'm with my wife or kids, a lot of times I won't, I won't do that. But in to and from work, podcast, Hanu health app, you know, in, on my dash watching my data. And then I'm breathing with the relaxator. It's incredible. So just find what works for you. Now, I think it's really good. And if you're just wondering, um, if you've pre-ordered the Hanu device, you're going to get one of those relaxators. Yeah, it's in the box. So that's really cool. All right, Cindy, great question. Small atomic steps create these atomic habits. Excellent. Thanks for listening to the Hanu Health Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. This podcast would not happen without listeners and supporters like you. And the best way to support us and the show is to head on over to iTunes and provide us with a five-star review. This helps us reach others and spread the good word of breathing and stress resiliency. If we read your five-star review on air, please reach out to podcast at hanuhealth.com with your name and mailing address, and we will send you some sweet Hanu gear. Until next time, breathe better and stress less. Thank you.